This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, we have a refresher course on how to stay safe when driving in winter weather. We'll talk with a representative from the Pennsylvania State Police next. Hello again, everyone, and get ready for information overload here on SSP TV. And remember, you can see us in HD on Service Electric Cable Vision, Channel 513. I'm Ken Karen. Let's get to our headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. A letter has been posted on the Valley Elementary Middle School PTA Facebook page expressing concern over a proposed Verizon cell phone tower on that school's property. The letter from William and Danielle Gatos was sent to Superintendent Dr. Craig Butler and the school board. It expresses concern over a tower that would be located on property at Valley Elementary School. School Board Vice President Vincent Zola tells FYI that the school district did sign a contract with Verizon Wireless, but it was prior to the start of his term in November. Zola says that he's unsure whether the district will need zoning approval from Sir Sugarloaf Township for the tower. He also says that this would be the second tower on district property. The first one is located behind the district's transportation garage on 22nd Street in Hazleton. The letter cites health concerns over electromagnetic radiation from the tower. Zola says that the matter did come up at a budget meeting last night. He recognized that a representative from Verizon, or he recommended that a representative from Verizon attend the next school board meeting to answer all questions and concerns. Seoul says Verizon will pay rent to the district for use of the ground for the tower. Two groups trying to build a dollar store in Cunningham are appealing a zoning decision that went against them. CGP Acquisition and Development and Capital Growth Buckhalter want to build a dollar general off of Route 93 near the residential development Lukey Manor. The appeal will be heard at a zoning board meeting on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. at the borough building on Main Street. The original permit for the store was denied because the zone is designated residential. Some residents say they were told the area in question would always be green space as a buffer between them and the highway. The applicants say the residential zoning inflicts hardship on them and prevents them from using the property. There is a petition circulating against the development of the land for the dollar store. It raises concerns over their safety, traffic and drainage or flooding problems, along with saying it will lower the quality of life for residents in the area. For more information on this story, check out the article written by Kelly Monitz in today's Standard Speaker. Hazleton City Council has voted to override a budget veto made by former Mayor Joe Yanuzzi. Council voted unanimously to override the veto of a budget it passed last month. Meanwhile, Mayor Jeff Cassette has proposed ta tax and fee increases that would allow for a non-emergency emergency police dispatcher and as many as six full-time cops. Council and the mayor must now come up with any additional amendments. The final budget must be adopted by February 15th. For the complete story on the budget situation, again, go to today's standard speaker. Well, 2016 marks a major milestone for our media partner, the Hazleton Standard Speaker. This weekend, the newspaper will kick off its 150th anniversary celebration with a 72-page insert. John Patton, the operations manager for the Standard Speaker, talks about the anniversary on a brand new Sam LaSanne show. It's six sections and it's a history of everything in the community. Um, you'll see some front pages uh, and you'll see the old uh, plain speaker, standard sentinel, you know, some of those things that, that came about. But uh, the history of the newspaper business is interesting in itself, but the history of the newspaper business in Hazleton, um, you know, really is something different. And so we'll walk you through from, uh, for 150 years, uh, some of the old editions, you'll see some uh, some names on papers and, and you'll be like, oh, okay, you know, and, and you'll see how all those papers, a lot of them small, you know, weeklies or or whatever and how they became um, you know the one paper that that now is is uh, is the only paper in Hazleton. Don't miss the special anniversary insert in this Sunday Standard Speaker and hear all about the anniversary year on this special Sam LaSanne show tonight at 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. with additional broadcasts throughout the weekend. And from everyone at SSP TV, happy anniversary to our media partner, the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We look forward to working with you for many years to come. Well, unfortunately, Old Man Winter has finally shown his face in Northeast Pennsylvania, and with his arrival, we have some tips to share on how to stay safe on the roads. We spoke with Trooper David Peters of Pennsylvania State Police Troop N in Hazleton about how to drive safely in the ice and snow we'll be expecting in the hopes to prevent accidents this winter. Well, it's always tricky driving in the winter. Um, most people 
that we see that come across are most of the time driving too fast for conditions. They're not, you may think the road is wet, but if the road is wet and it's 10 degrees, there's a, a strong chance that there's some, some possible icy situations on that road. So, you know, slow down, give yourself plenty of time to go, drive with your headlights on, especially diminished, you know, whiteout uh, areas so you're more visible to other drivers on the road. And just take your time. It, you have to really take your time. I mean, the most of the time we do come across people, it's because they're driving too fast for the conditions or they're not prepared for the sudden changes and how they change in altitude and things like that. And, and that's where we see most people uh, get into traffic collisions in those particular spots. To stay up to date on road conditions, head to 511pa.com or you can download the 511 app. Recently, a young Harwood resident wrote to the editor of the Standard Speaker to let off some steam after his bike and his sister's bike were stolen. Well, Eugene Ivanko of West Hazleton read that letter in the paper and decided to give 11-year-old Drayden Call a new bike that he had. According to the Standard Speaker, Ivanko reached out to prove to Call that there are good people in the Hazleton area. Another generous local resident is donating a new bike to Cole's sister, Kayla. And a big congratulations to the first, second, and third place winners of the 2016 Hazleton Area School District Spelling Bee. The bee was held on Wednesday at the West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. Out of the 32 students to compete in the Spelling Bee, 7th grader Landon Wolk from Drums Elementary Middle School won the first place prize of $100 for spelling laundromat correctly. He will continue on to the regional competition, competition which will be held at the Woodlands in Wilkesbury in March. The second place prize of $75 went to 6th grader Sabria Sheik of Drums Elementary Middle School. In addition to winning second place, she was also awarded $50 for being the top speller in her grade. And the third place prize of $50 was given to 6th grader Gabriella Terracino. She's also from Drums Elementary Middle School. The prizes awarded to these children were provided by the Standard Speaker and McDonald's. And coming up next, we talk with the president of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. And later during the sportscast, check out my interview with the new CEO of the Penn State University Alumni Association, where we'll talk all about Nittany Lion football. This is FYI News 13. Brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Well, it's a new year for everyone and a new year at the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. And here to tell us about the plans and what's upcoming for 2016 is Mary Malone, the president of the chamber. First of all, great new year ahead of us with a lot of things happening in downtown Hazleton right off the bat. We are, Lisa. Happy New Year to you and to all of your viewers here at SSP TV from the Chamber, the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. And we've already got a pretty full calendar for 2016. So some highlights. Uh, new mayor in the city of Hazleton, and he's going to kick off our red carpet legislative series. That happens. He'll be our first speaker, and so we're looking forward to hearing his vision and plans that are going on. Have two mixers already set up in January. Um, to get you out of those doldrums and do some business networking. And always in January, we do a big membership push um, at this point. So we want to make sure that all businesses are tied in and connected um, and take advantage of the services of the Greater Hazleton Chamber. Now, how important is it for businesses to be involved? Because you get a lot of information and knowledge that you wouldn't otherwise get if you weren't a chamber member. Absolutely. I I think I guess the, the elevator version for it is the networking opportunities with other business professionals in the greater Hazleton area to either get new customers for yourself or uh, to come up with new partnerships. The other piece is that education aspect. Uh, I know that we have one coming up related to social media and ways for businesses of all different types to do that. But another important piece that, that we have that we'll be talking more about here at SSP TV, the chamber has, everyone has to turn on their, their lights and utility and as a chamber membership, through on-demand energy and chamber choice. So there are a lot of perks um, that uh, are in there and advantages. So our website is chock full of some of them. And as always, we'd be happy to come out and talk to anyone who's interested in, uh, in chamber membership. 
Sounds great to me. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, what are your hopes now for the new year? We're seeing such changes in the downtown, the chamber located right in the heart of the downtown like we are. So we're really looking forward to our, our new arts building and everything that is happening. There's a, there's a lot in progress, you're right, Lisa, with, <clears throat> with downtown, but for the area. Right now, we have about 600 members in our chamber. My hope for the chamber um, in 2016 is that we could get it up closer to an 800 number because, again, there are lots of different businesses, small and large, mom and pop shops, all of those things that I think can benefit from the services of the chamber. And so that's my hope is to uh, exceed the roles and, again, continue to, to meet the needs. Um, and sometimes those change over the course of any given year from your perspective. But starting out with that red carpet series with our brand new mayor and his vision and all of the great work we do on different task force, whether it's crime prevention, the women's networking group just got together and talked about some exciting topics and things that we're looking at. Uh, if, if we're looking at, again, uh, before we know, it'll be time for the, the PA cleanup that the chamber spearheads and Fun Fest will be right around the corner. So lots oh of different, I know, uh, right? We'll, we'll be saying Merry Christmas again before, uh, before we know it. So, so, so some good things. But again, that those businesses uh, take advantage and that the chamber can add to their success. Well, we hope this is a very successful year for everyone here in the greater Hazleton area. Mary, stop back often this year and keep us up to date. Will do. Thanks so much for having us. Mary Malone from the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Here's some good news. It's almost the weekend and we can expect a decent day on Friday and OK Saturday and eh, Sunday and Monday. Blah. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service tonight. Mostly cloudy with a low around 30 while a southwest wind from three to six miles per hour on our four day outlook. Here's our Friday. Mostly cloudy with a high near 42 degrees. Friday night rain is likely before 1 a.m. Then rain and snow. Our low will be 36 degrees. Little or no snow accumulation expected on Saturday. A chance of rain and snow showers mainly before 7 a.m. Mostly cloudy with a high near 36 degrees. Saturday night, a chance of flurries after 1 a.m. It will be mostly cloudy with a low around 23. Sunday, we do have a 30% chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy. Our high will be near 28 degrees. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 13. And then on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, partly sunny with a high near 20 degrees. So I guess it's not that bad. Monday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 11 degrees. That is bad, but it could be worse. Now I have your midday winning lottery numbers here on FYI, maybe a consolation prize. If you didn't win the Powerball last night, pick two, one, six, pick three, nine, two, four, pick four, one, nine, two, four, pick five, six, four, one, two, six. When we come back on FYI, we'll talk Penn State football with the CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association. But right now, check out Law Talk. Hello and welcome to Law Talk. Today we're going to talk about a very oftentimes tragic but very important uh, subject involving uh, motor vehicle accidents and in particular uh, victims of motor vehicle accidents who have been victimized by a drunk driver. And Alexis uh, spent seven years as a prosecutor in the Luzerne County DA's office. She's very familiar with that and she can uh, bring you all up to date on and what needs to be done if that unfortunate event should happen to you or a family member? As my father mentioned, I did work in the Luzerne County District Attorney's Office for some time. During my time there, I did, for two years, head up the Vehicular Homicide Division. And unfortunately, in those cases, a lot of times the individuals who are victimized uh, were victimized by drunk drivers. Uh, so I have a lot of experience on the criminal side as being an advocate for these individuals who were victimized by drunk drivers. Now, in civil practice, I'm able to be an advocate for victims who are uh, involved in drunk driving accidents. And I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that not only are these people affected in their work life and their family life, their entire lives uh, have changed from that moment forward. A lot of times there are significant injuries. They can be catastrophic, uh, again, to the work life and to the family life. Uh, and I offer uh, the availability to work with law enforcement officers who are doing investigations on behalf of people who were involved in these types of accidents. Uh, and it's important to respect the work that they're doing, uh, that being because the investigations that they're conducting certainly can be beneficial to the civil portion of a claim. 
Uh, so if you're involved in a drunk driving accident, give us a call. I'd be happy to sit down with you and speak to you regarding the concerns that you might have, as I'm very aware of the effects that it will have on, you, on your life from, from that moment forward. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association, joins us once again. And lifetime Penn State football fan, you've always had a connection to the university. Now, you yourself were a football player, so you played at Bloomsburg University. What was kind of your past playing football? So it's a it's a really long story, and it was more of a more of a dare than anything else. But I was a walk on on the um, on the 1994 Bloomsburg University football team made some lifelong connections and some great friends. But that was my only year of, of really formal football ever. Became the mascot at my junior and senior year. So I actually got on the field more as the Bloomsburg Husky than as a, as a football player. But it was a great experience. Interesting background. You've been going to games. You said your dad graduated in 1972. Right. So around the time John Capaletti was playing for Penn right. State, you yourself, you said, got to see a ton of games from the 80s to the 90s. Right. What's maybe your fondest memory of being at Beaver Stadium or being, yeah, being at Beaver Stadium? Yeah, so my fondest memory isn't even really from childhood. It was, uh, it was the Michigan game a couple of years ago, the, the four overtime uh, thriller when Bill O'Brien was the head coach. And, you know, for me, I point to that game uh, as, as one, it was just an instant classic college football game, right? And Christian Hackenberg, freshman year and um, leading the team back. But really, it was the first time that I felt like the magic was back in Beaver Stadium after everything that the the Penn State community had gone through and it was just uh it was a it was a really moving experience to be there that night what a great time and yeah what a great game as well what how about favorite players who do you look to who is someone you always who is your favorite Penn State football player so growing up absolutely Shane Conlon I mean Shane Conlon was just a, a monster in the middle you know the quintessential linebacker you uh product um, I, you know, I've always trended towards, uh, towards the defensive players. So whether it was uh, Shane Conlon or LeVar Arrington or Sean Lee or um, all those guys, the, the guys who can come up and, and deliver punishment were uh, the guys that I really got excited about. So you, I, you told me you went through a lot of the games in the 80s, I guess, going up there with your father, and I've never seen a national championship. Do you remember what it was like, Penn State winning it all? Oh, I do. Uh, we, saw, we saw every home game that year, and I actually have the programs from every home and away game that year. But absolutely remember, you know, the, really the thing that sticks out in my mind of that season was um, the lead-up to the Fiesta Bowl. I, I'm not sure if you, if you remember, but like the night before the Fiesta Bowl, we got something like a foot and a half of snow and we didn't know if we'd have power. And so my dad called me from work and said, walk down to Gould's IGA and make sure you buy enough batteries to power the little handheld TV that we had uh, because we weren't going to miss that game. And so I just remember um, uh, what a great, uh, you know, uh, David versus Goliath kind of victory. Uh, it was, you know, again, the, the quintessential uh, Penn State victory. It was, uh, you know, the game plan, the scheme, the, uh, it, it was, you know, the, we won it the Penn State way that day. Last thing I want to ask you, and then we'll get you out of here. So you go, come from Oregon now. You worked at the University right. of Oregon where you have the most flashiest uniforms in college football. Back to Pennsylvania and your roots, and it's the black shoes, blaze, basic blues, no right. names, all game. Right. So difference in cultures there, and do you like the plain uniform? I like and appreciate both, right? I mean, I love the innovation, and I love the um, you know, the forward thinking of the Oregon, uh, of, of the University of Oregon and of the connection with Nike and the uniforms. It's fantastic. It's all, it's what you do if you're an Oregon Duck fan is what are they going to wear this weekend, right? I, I have the same level of appreciation for, for the history and tradition and, um, and the classic look of the, the black shoes and, and white uh, white uniforms. You know, my wife and I went down to the Tax Slayer Bowl, and she was joking because she got she's in love with the Oregon uniforms. But she said, "Looks like Penn State's wearing their throwback uniforms again." <laughs> so it was uh, love and appreciation for both of those, and it's uh, it's what each of those institutions are known for. 
Well, Paul, best of luck out there in Happy Valley. We appreciate you checking in here back near your hometown as you take over the Alumni Association of Penn State. Thanks, Thanks to Paul again, who hails from Sugarloaf for sharing some memories with us. To the FYI standard speaker scoreboard now, huge dual wrestling matchup in the Wyoming Valley Conference and Tunkanic. They take the win. They give Hazel Tenaria their first conference loss of the season, and Tunkanic stays undefeated in the Wyoming Valley Conference Division I standings. In the Schuylkill League, there was another showdown where Pottsville beat North Schuylkill. Also in the Schuylkill League, Tamaqua and Monoy area, they both took losses in wrestling. The Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins, they tra trailed by two goals twice in their game against St. John's, but no worries, they came back and picked up their seventh straight win. All right, thanks for watching the sportscast. Here comes the social report, and then I'll be back to wrap things up on FYI. Thursday is $1 burger night at Bottlenecks. Get a juicy fourth pound burger for only $1 all night long. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, Catholic Social Services Auxiliary has planned a night at the races to benefit the programs of the agency. The event will be held Saturday, January 16th at the Family Center located on Church Street. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the post time is slated for 7. Tickets are $10 in advance or $12 at the door and can be purchased by calling 570-455-1521. And finally, Hazleton Public Transit is announcing that their office will be closed Monday, January 18th in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Bus services will continue uninterrupted. The office will reopen and resume normal office hours Tuesday. For info, check out RideHPT.com. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lawrence D. Tranguch of McAdoo. Funeral is Saturday at 9 a.m. from the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Mary Gadziak of Latimer Mines. Funeral is Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Ruth Ferdinand of Drums. Mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Good Shepherd Church. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the church. Arrangements are under the direction of the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Rose Chunko of Beaver Meadows. Memorial is Friday at noon at the John J. Pustai Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 11 a.m. to noon. And William M. Andres of Whitehaven. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Lehman Family Funeral Service. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name now on News 13, you have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Lawrence Ambrose of Freeland. Lawrence, if you're watching, give us a call 570-455-7267, extension 104. That's the show. Thank you for watching again. More bonus footage right now on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash FYNews13. We have an extra clip from my interview with Paul Clifford. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you on Friday. Take it easy. Cadillac, Hazleton, drive with experience.